Hi everybody, this is Viola's daughter, Consuelo, and I'm back again to show you some of my makes. And um, by the way, I want to welcome all of you back, my uh, existing subscribers. And if this is first time here, well, welcome too. And we're glad to have you here. Um, I have a few things I'd like to show you. I'm calling this episode, um, oh, before I tell you that, can you do me a favor? Hit the like button when you come in. And uh, we like to have that, as uh, Kelly calls it, the whole package, uh, subscribe, like, comment, and share if you want to. Um, don't mind if you share um, all my makes that I have are for everyone Either you want to use them or I'll try and tell you whoever inspired me or whose pattern I I um, used I usually change it but I start off with somebody's pattern at least for the count and the format um, and I'm inspired by many many makers here on YouTube so I'm going to start to show you on this episode, I believe it's number 17. I uh, could be wrong. I'm not good at counting. <laughs> That's not good for a crocheter to say, but I really hate to count. I think I've said that several times. Maybe every episode I've said it. But um, that's, uh, that's how it is. What can I say? So I'm here today. I was going to go outside, but uh, here in New Jersey... It started to get dark, and I was afraid that while I was in the middle of filming, it um, could probably start to rain. If not rain, sprinkle. That's what it did yesterday. It's not supposed to rain today, but it's threatening. It's dark out. And it's only about 3.30 here in the afternoon, and it's pretty dark. It's getting darker as it goes. I played with my plants this morning, trimmed them, talked to them, watered them. The usual and uh, don't tell me you don't talk to your trees I do <laughs> I even give them names but um, that's for another episode and uh, like, like I'm looking over here because I think you can see my hand I have um, I have a, a stack of stall shawls that I made throughout the year um, some fancy some not so fancy depending on what I wanted to use it for. Like some I knew I was just gonna wrap up in it and lay in my couch in the winter day while crocheting or watching TV. I, I do, like most of you, I do binge war, uh, watch Netflix, Hulu, and even YouTube has some movies. So uh, in between that, I do my audio books. In between that, I um, watch regular TV, I like movies. I really like bad movies. They make me laugh. Um, that's a joke around the house because whenever they see me watching a movie, everybody cringes and goes, what are you watching? Because they know it's going to be bad. It's either bad or it's very old. Um, <laughs> and everybody else saw it except me. And I think the thing they hate most is that I enjoy it. Oh, by, oh, by the way, I have a mic on. Let's see if it's working. I have no idea. I pressed a few buttons, I went in my setting, I didn't find anything specific for Mike, so um, in the comments if you can hear me better than usual, or if I sound a little strange, whatever, you know, let me know. I appreciate it, because uh, to me I sound fine, but then I always sound this way, <laughs> so I can't tell. So maybe, uh, even when I did the playback, I couldn't tell. Uh, maybe one of my friends on YouTube will walk me through the procedure. Like I told you, I don't know anything about uh, operating on YouTube. Everything is brand new. I'm like a three-year-old. And I'm just pressing buttons, plugging in things, and hoping that it all works. So I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, I try to anyway. Uh, a story might creep in there one or two places. Uh, it, it always happens. I can't help it. That's the way I am. <laughs> I always remember some old story that happened uh, many, many moons ago. So um, I'm going to show you my makes, not in any particular order. Um, 
because and not and unfortunately I'm not going to be able to tell you at least on while I'm filming or taping um, probably won't be able to tell you who's um, the inspiration or the maker of the original pattern um, most of the time I forget uh, and then I change up and I look at it and it doesn't really look too much like the person I was looking at so I don't know if I should even call their name but um, if I remember I'll tell you and if I uh, can find the information I'll put it down in the description box down here with that little arrow you press on it and it opens up a whole slew of information um, some that might be useful to you and some that may not but it's going to be there so I'll put anybody's uh, maybe their name of their item or the maker and then you can go to their site and look for it most of the time I go on somebody's site and I'll, like I'll say oh I want to make a shawl and I'll look through a whole bunch of them and until one hits my eye or inspires me uh, I probably won't use it or I might change it so I'm going to uh, show you some I showed you already before like the one behind me if anybody saw my previous episode it's the let me show you anyway again just in case somebody is brand new um, it's my favorite shawl it's got copper sparkles in it and it's very purple and I know I, sh I did this in the last episode um, it's granny meets virus and it's really large uh, I think I used I got like six or seven balls uh, six six or eight balls um, of yarn in the mill end package I think I told you all of this but um, I used all of it I used it to the last drop and then the only thing I made extra out of this I had enough I made a rose in case I had my hair up and I wanted to zhuzh it up, you know, put a rose there or add to my hair. Um, you know, as you get older, your hair seems to be wussy and wimpy and limp, <laughs> as they say. So that's, uh, that's all I got out of that package. But it wasn't very expensive because it was a Mills Inn. And I don't know, if you're new, you probably don't really know... Uh, what Mills Ends might mean if you're new to yarn and fiber. Mills Ends means um, they sell them usually in bulk, like you get a pound, whatever it comes out to be in yardage. Nobody usually knows because it's not on the package. And you get a pound of yarn. And a pound of yarn is a lot. Most skeins are 3.5 or 7 ounces. Um, or if you do grams, you get balls that are 100 grams, 200 grams, 300 grams. I don't do grams. I know grams because I lived in a foreign country for a few years and um, so I had to work in the metric system and then I work in the graphic field and right now everything's international so you go back and forth between inches and metric so I do know the metric system but uh, I started crocheting in inches and ounces and yardage and that's what I use I use yards I know exactly how many yards roughly I'm um, not exactly but roughly to make an article how many yards I need to buy and I'm just gonna throw this back here in my little cramp corner my corner of chaos I call it I try to make it look like it's organized and it's orderly uh, but it's not and it keeps ever changing and that's the problem all right so i'm going to show you another i think no this one mill end i got this yarn at ac moore where they used to sell samples and the sample balls were like maybe a dollar a piece most of the time when it was on sale it was a dollar it was anywhere from a dollar to two dollars at the most if i can remember right and um so I bought like, I love this color, it was camouflage, but it was in a pretty turquoise. And as you can see, it's really, 
really big. It's a simple pattern. It's the only uh, double crochet. Oh, I got my mic wire in here. Sorry. I, this is the first time I'm using my mic, so I don't even know if it's gonna work. But, um, so I did a combination of straight uh, double crochet. Then I went down here and I added some little more spacier pattern over here for a different texture and to emphasize the uh, triangle shape of it. And, um, and I didn't add anything else. You know why? Because this one was for me. This was for me to wrap up. And I added, oh, picos. I did do picos. Oh, wow, I don't remember doing that. There's picos at the end. Let me show you closer if I can do this. I'm such a klutz. It's not easy to do this. My hat's off to QVC and HSN when they used to show things. Um, see, there's little picos. Actually, there's a gazillion picos because the scarf is really big because I made it like a blanket. A blanket with points. <laughs> That's what it is, a blanket with points. And I wrap myself up in it from shoulder to maybe my back of my knee and I sit in it, but it's very light. It's only a, um, like a two. I think it's a two or one gauge of yarn. So it's thin, it's light. You could use it in the summer if you wanted to. Like, you know, sometimes the air conditioning gets to you. Uh, I've been keeping my air conditioning a little, what is that? Lower on the cool, higher on the numbers because I'm always so cold. Oh, I didn't even notice this. I, I made this like over a year ago and I really don't look at it too much anymore. Uh, it has little, um, I did, I was showing you the wrong side, I guess, because it has a whole band of um, bobbles. Can you see that? If I go this way, you get the shadows. See there's bobbles in there? So there's open, like window pane, and there's the regular double crochet, and there's a whole big band of bobbles. That is window pane, bobbles. Oh, I was showing you the wrong side, duh. And um, regular uh, crochet. I think this a that's half double. I can see that. That's half double. More bobbles. I must have been practicing my bobbles when I did this. Didn't follow anybody's uh, pattern. I just started making it and kept using it and uh, that's all I thought it was big enough. And you you know with yarn, it ends up being maybe, say say 12 inches, and then if you keep it for a year or you, you throw it in the wash or you block it, then it ends up being 15 inches. It gains like, I would say easy, 25% in length, um, maybe 20% in length. So if something starts out 20, it ends up being like 22, which to me doesn't matter because I make my blouses long. I'm okay with a tunic. I have a set length I know for my body, the, from my neck to where I'm comfortable on the bottom. I usually stop at 22. And so if it stretches to 24, 25, it's mid thigh, it doesn't matter. Then I call it a tunic. I don't wear crop tops anymore. I used to when I was like 100, 110 pounds, but those days were long gone. So I don't wear crop tops. So all my, my tops can be long, it's okay. And I showed you this one too, last week, or not last week, when last episode. And this was when I did the BOD along. And I showed you this. But this is for the newbies. Let me look and see what side I'm showing you because last one and this one too, I'm showing you the wrong side. Okay, I'm back up, back up. And I'll hold it back a little bit. Let me push my chair back. I'm all twisted up in my mic here. I knew this mic wasn't gonna work for me, but I'm trying because people say they can't hear me because I don't talk loud. So, <laughs> and again, I did the picos on the end, a million picos. I think I like them. They look nice and finished, that's why I do them. Instead of big balls or tassels, sometimes tassels get in the way. I mean, you get all hung up in them. And if you intend on just wrapping them up and 
um, you know, getting that cozy feeling, you don't need the tassels. The tassels is a little panache that I don't need. So this is like a really long one, um, about four feet, maybe a little more. And it's uh, uh, almost a little over five because my arm is from here to here is three. Um, so it's almost five, five and a half across. But who counts the points? I don't know. I never knew how you measure scarves and shawls. Um, I just stop when I think it's enough. Really technical, aren't I? <laughs> okay, and here is this one. All right, this one. This one. Okay, this one was my friend Kalisha. So the last one I just showed you, that was a BOD uh, tutorial. It's online. It's one of her later ones. I think it's called Easy, Easy Shawl. Um, I used uh, Big Twist, Big Twist Yarn. It was uh, four gauge acrylic. And it's the new, the, the one they just, well, I just found it. I don't know if it's new. It's called uh, Graphic or Vivid. Which one is it? I think it's Vivid. I have both of them, that's why I don't know. Um, Can I get my hands on it? Probably not. Sorry for the back of the head. Big no-no, right? <laughs> now you know I have a back of a head. Okay, uh, <laughs> anyway, I think it's Vivid, V-I-V-I-D. And it's really cool because it, um, it started out like when I saw the skein, it had like jean colors. And I didn't see the purples there's like a slight purple, and then there's a, like a nice creamy, um, not a white, but it's more leaning towards a yellow. But it's very, very faint. And um, as you crochet, it's a, it's a delight because you start seeing all these colors come along. I'm gonna see, see there's, a, there's pink in there. And then there's a lighter pink. And then there's a deeper denim with purple, and then den it looks like blue, but I think it's denim with purple. But then there's all different shades of denim. So it's really fun to crochet because as you're going along, and they blend nice, you know, it's self-striping, but it blends so you don't have that hard stripe. Uh, you know, they tell us uh, plump ladies we shouldn't be wearing stripes. But this is in the V, so it really shouldn't matter. But it's still, it's fun to crochet. I did the same stitch over and over again. It was a two row pattern um, with the window pane. And uh, it was fun to do because the colors keep changing. And I didn't know what color I was gonna get because you get pink and blue, you get blue and blue, blue and purple, blue and cream, blue and yellow. It was really pretty. I, I think it's nice. I, I think it'll look good with jeans or something. And then this one, is Mandela. Mandela Tweed. Excuse the mic, why that's choking me. It's Mandela Tweed. And you might say, uh, what shape is that shawl? And I can tell you, I have no idea because <laughs> um, Kalisha from Quirky Monday made this pattern. It's granny squares, but it's on a diagonal asymmetrical isn't that a mouthful it's so technical but it's asymmetrical so it started out in the corner small and it got bigger and it went on the slant and your, sh your stitches start going on the slant and then it was multicolor so um, I got lost in the middle of it somewhere but I was determined to get this me I love a challenge I'm determined I'm going to get this done. You see how it's uh, it's sort of on the slant. But what happened somewhere along the way, I got lost. And so I had to stop. And I used all kinds of yarn. I used uh, Mandela and Mandela Tweed. So some of them are like a Mandela mix. And then there's a Tweed. If you see, you can see it graduates. And then it starts changing colors again. 
and then I boarded it all off. So I didn't follow her pattern at all. I just went on my merry way because I was lost. I was lost in no man's land. And, uh, and I added tassels, and they were in Mandela tweeds, so one tassels, one color. Oh, well, you know, both tassels are the same color. Who knew? I didn't really pay attention to that, I guess. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I did this last year during uh, the lockdown. So uh, it was Zelda who said, let's do this in honor of Kalisha's nice design that she did. And it was challenging. Some people made really big ones. Mine came out small because I said, that's it. I'm going to end this. I'm going my own way. This is not Kalisha's <laughs> design. So I stopped at a point and I wear this with a, a small leather jacket that I wear. It's perfect. You know, it's actually, I just, oh this microphone I don't know if I can do this hold on a sec let me take it off I don't really think it makes a difference uh, but then I can't tell so I put it on I have a brown leather jacket and you know in the winter you're wearing those dull colors you know black brown blue whatever and um, you see why I don't like to dress on, on camera and then you do whatever whatever works out sometimes let me back up again sometimes it works out and I look like I know what I'm doing other times it looks like I'm just being a boho I'm cold and I wrap myself up I just don't know it does different things so but I actually like it but it's a combination Kalisha Consuelo mess up but I did take her, her major elements. I did the granny square, I did it on the diagonal, it's asymmetrical, and that's about it. And like I said, her, her channel name is Quirky Mondays. I haven't seen her lately, I don't know where she is. I have to look for her. I know I subscribe to her, but sometimes they drop off the list. Now, this is what Kalisha really wanted me to make. <laughs> it's similar, oh God. But these are really big. I didn't realize things were so big. I don't have a problem with making big things, but this is really big. You see how the granny square goes on the slant? And there's multiple colors. And I use Mandela, which is a three, three gauge. And, uh, and I came out, and at the end, you're supposed to end in the slant, which I did. Actually, that's the top and you end to this little point, and you put your tassels on. But it's a lot bigger than the other one. Well, the other one, I knew I was going in the wrong direction, so I ended my pain real quick. But I love it, and it's the uh, Mandela tweed, and I think there's a few scraps. Um, I used all these odd and end Mandelas I had, this, but it's mostly Mandela tweed. Um, don't remember the number, oh, it was Buddha. I remember because I liked the name, so I took it. You know, I bought it and figured out what it was. Now look at the crazy colors in there, aren't they cool? Um, I love wearing this one. I don't wear it with the little jacket because the little leather jacket gets uh, lost in all the scarf. And uh, you can actually wear it around your arms, you know, your shoulders. And again, I'm in a t-shirt, so I'm not dressed not dressed for, uh, let's see if I can move this. Here I go, modeling again. Who knew at 74 my modeling days would start? Okay, so then you wear it. Um, don't read my t-shirt because I'm really not grumpy right now. Uh, and you can see it has, so it's nice. It goes different ways. I guess you could, you could fling it if you're so inclined. As you can see, this is not my forte. I, when I put my scarf on, it looks like I did it uh, haphazardly, which I did. Okay, and I see I've been on here a long time already. Okay, and I got like, oh, only got two more to show you. And I'll ease your pain. Um, so that was also, now this is what she was really looking for. And it's a uh, three gauge, I used one ball and a couple I think a couple of these are colors that were left from the other one 
um, yeah, I think this pink and purple, I'm, I'm not sure if this is part of the game because I don't think we transitioned from this green and white into purple and pink. I think I did some of my usual, I'll throw this in, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, and this one I did last year also during COVID. I was just really starting to work on shawls, so I, I think I told you once before but I'll repeat myself just in case you're new. Um, I tend to uh, do multiples. Like I'll get on a kick and then I'll do shawls. But in between I'll do something else. I'm not like shawl. I can't repeat the shawl. Like, well, I do if I really like it. I did repeat this one. Um, all of them went away as gifts though. Um, and the person really deserved it who I gave it to. Uh, they they were more than generous, and I felt I had to meet the meet somewhat of the generosity. So now this one is called butterfly shawl, and it ends up a, like a ruffle. Look at all these colors, and I really enjoyed making this too because I never knew what color I was going to be in, and so in between is a mesh mesh and the scalloped and god forbid i don't remember who whose uh, tutorial started me off i know i took off again and i added more ruffles here uh, because i i wanted what i do is i usually buy a skein if it's uh 420 to 500 i'll use the whole thing because what am i going to do with the leftovers yeah what do you do uh, i don't wear headbands very well uh, I have a small head, and when I put a headband, glasses, earrings, uh, I'm overwhelmed, and I, I just don't think I look as cool as other people do with it. So I try to use the whole ball. That's what my point is. So uh, this yarn is really fine. Let me see if I can show it to you. I'm going to try and ball it up. Uh, this yarn is very fine. And it's shawl in the ball, which is a kind of, it's really perfect for shawls, but it has this strange, like you get this white string in between it and it becomes like flecky. Can you see that? It becomes flecked with the string and look at the range of colors. Shawl, shawl in the ball. That's a tongue, tongue twister. I think it was, I think it's fiber spider, but I, other people have done this shawl. So, you know, to, to start off, um, to get your know, starting stitch, you just go to the tutorial YouTube and you start off here. It's just like a shell. Then you do a mesh, then you do several shells, and then you do a mesh and then you do shells and lo and behold, little by little, you get to the point where you have this really big shawl. Um, if I put it by the white, you can see it better. You can see the pattern. My walls are kind of white, off-white. And then it has a ruffle on the bottom, which I like. Um, I've never worn it. I've never worn most of these uh, shawls. Um, like I said, last year, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the drugstore. Who wants to, you know, where do you wear shawls to? You know, I don't go anywhere. I went to the drugstore, supermarket, um, bank, maybe Home Depot, definitely Michael's here and there, but not as much as I would have. So um, this is, you know, all these colors were on the one skein, the one skein shawl. I didn't buy two. Um, I wasn't sure I liked it because it was, it's very fine. And it's, um, it has thick and thin, I guess that's called roving. It has thick and thin um, uh, areas. Like this teal is thick and fuzzy. You almost can't see any uh, stitch definition. And then you go into this goldish color and it has more definition. And then it gets fuzzy and fat again so it's really fairly uh, uh, 
uh, exercise and surprise, surprise. So my last show, and then I'll let you go. I'm almost here in a half an hour, which is longer than I wanted to be. Um, this is the last one. I made this two weeks ago. Took me three days. That's with blocking, because I did block it. It took me three days, and this, that's only half of it. And I don't usually make rectangular shawls, but I wanted something lacy. It just goes on and on and on. And it's over six feet long, but it's really light. It's very spidery, if that's a word, but it's lacy actually. And it's shells, little shells. Oh God, I forgot who, who, whose uh, tutorial it is. Somebody's tutorial for the stitch. And I just kept going on and on. And then I blocked it lightly. I just wet it a little bit and stretched it out so that you could see the shell definition. Because you know, when you first crochet, it tends to like just poof up. And um, I don't know if, if I can I gotta get rid of this mic again. Um, I don't know if you could tell how big it is. I'm five feet one, barely. I'm an incredible shape, shrink the woman. Again, I'm not dressed for modeling. One of these days I'm gonna come out with the right. See how um, lacy it is? I'm hoping that you could determine. Oh my goodness, I put the mic in front of there. Well, that's not smart. Okay. Okay, let's start this over again. It's lacy. Ignore that. I probably won't edit it out because I'm not doing editing. And it's square or rectangle. See how long it is? So, again, it's almost six feet. It's almost six feet. Very sheer. It's just for the summer. And I was, I was into making summer sh things. Because it was like 100 degrees outside. I think it was 92. I lied. I'm exaggerating again. But um, I, you just want something on your shoulder. Maybe you have a sundress. And you're around strange people. And you're feeling a little self-conscious. You don't want everything hanging out or exposed. Then you put your shawl on. Your security blanket. <laughs> don't let me get started we do, we do have strange thoughts every now and then when we're around other people so this is um, I folded it in half I show the other side I hope I'm showing you the right side God knows let me see if I can determine that mm. it's one of those things you can't tell it's also, it's shawl in the ball, so if you can see, you, you'll notice that there's um, thicker areas, and it changes colors, and then look, see, you can't see the stitch definition, but I kind of like it, because it's kind of boho, it's uh, not so conservative, and stuffy, you don't look like you're going to a wedding, you, and I was thinking, wouldn't this be a great one to wear? In the winter, when uh, you just want a little something to, to zhuzh up, as they say, you're, uh, excuse me, there's somebody, I told you, somebody pushed my, made my chair high. So I'm like a kid with my legs, <laughs> my feet are dangling, and I try to push the chair back and they, they don't touch the floor. Again, I found a string I didn't uh, finish. So you could just wear this one. Um, you could wear it with your jean jacket, you know, jean jacket, jeans, some boots, and look, it just it either compacts down, you could, you could swish it down. Let me sit back in my chair. I'm like a baby in this chair. Oh, now it moved down. Anyway, <laughs> oh, see, and it goes this way. And I don't know how to tie scarves. I see people tie their scarves, and they look so elegant and special but I guess you know you put it on where whatever way it falls it falls there's not very much white in here and 
I think the white is what actually shows my stitch pattern because the blues they blend so much you can't even see it but there's not a lot of white I think this started off with uh, cream where is it yeah it started off with all this white and all I got was this and this so that's why I blocked it because you see how it um, I think I showed you one of my episodes I show you how I block on the table not too fussy you know just to give it a little nudge to stretch out a little bit because it tends to like just collapse on itself and get spongy so if you do uh, this one did I do steam I might have done steam because steam dries faster I, I think I did steam I have a little hand steamer and I steam it out and it's got great colors. It's got gray. It's got blue. You can wear it with anything. You can wear it dressed up, depending on how you, you know, how you walk or wear whatever you're wearing with. And um, so you can see it's a lighter material. It's like it's, it's about six feet. Yeah, because I stretched it out my table six feet. Yeah, so it was six feet by four just approximately um, I think you're gonna bunch it up so it really doesn't matter as long as six feet will go around almost any woman's shoulders um, never wore this either of course I don't wear I don't wear my things in case somebody is going to get it as a gift or whatever um, I tend not to wear them if I think that somebody else will like it and I just never know and a few I make for myself and you know then it's not a problem so it's uh, almost time to say goodbye I've been on here I'm getting my uh, videos getting longer and longer so I'm gonna ask you so this are all the shawls that I have available the other ones I gave away so I don't have them to show uh, yeah that's it so maybe I'll do one on I got a couple more cardigans ponchos maybe the next one will be about ponchos or cardigans um I sh then this way i've showed you all my makes that i have that uh i didn't do the hats and the cowls but that's another time maybe for the winter i'll do that one so i did all the shawls that i have around that i could find um and i'll have to say goodbye so uh i just want to repeat uh Please hit the like button, or not, if you don't like it, then hit the non-like. But it's good for me, so I know if you like the content, uh, YouTube knows if you like the content. And um, you can share. Please comment if you want to. I, I just think it's great that you guys comment to me. Um, uh, I'm not a celebrity or anything, so I'm surprised you even want to leave a message to me but <laughs> I'm I do read them all and I do enjoy hearing what you have to say and I hope that we all become YouTube friends if nothing else be YouTube friends uh, if you have a channel I'm gonna follow you you can follow me uh, if you don't have a channel that's fine too you can still make comments we're all uh, in the you know the maker family you might be a knitter uh, I knit too, but I don't have any knitting. I, I can't start another uh, craft. I told you I do a few already. And right now I'm just concentrating on my crocheting because that gives me the most joy. Um, I do have some crochet bracelets. Maybe I'll do a video on that if, you were, if you're interested. You could tell me in the comments. You could say, yeah, no, I don't want to see that. Uh, just stick to what you're doing. <laughs> but whatever whatever your your thoughts are on the subject that'll be appreciated I, I'll love it I'll read it and I go back and I read them again because sometimes I'm you know somebody sees two weeks later and they add a comment I go back and I read them again uh, I don't have that many I don't have hundreds so it's easy to do oh <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say goodbye be kind I love talking to all of you and thank you for watching my channel and um, Bye-bye.